Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Found. When we left off, we left off at yet another cliffhanger part. We find out that there has a program that is going back in time and rescuing children that were somehow damaged by history. You know, um, history was cruel to them and these children didn't get a chance to survive. And so now there's this group that's going back and rescuing them. And they were told that they are all the lost children of history. Chapter 31. Which one am I? Jonah demanded. But his voice got lost in the sea of voices around him, all calling out the same question, all shouting, how could it be? That's not possible. I can't believe it. Things like that. Believe it, J.B. said, his voice carrying over the shouts. It's true. Incredibly, Mr. Hodge was nodding, too. Virginia Dare, he said, first child born of English parents in the Americas, who vanished with the rest of the Roanoke colony, Edward, Edward and Richard, the British princes who vanished from the Tower of London in 1483. Anastasia and Alexis, the two youngest children of the Caesar, Tsar Nicholas II, who disappeared during the Russian Revolution. The kidnapped Lindenburg baby, the so-called Eaglet. It was my best rescue mission yet. It was your worst rescue mission yet, JB retorted. If we hadn't discovered how to hold back the ripple just temporarily until we could heal all these wounds, until we could re return the children to their rightful place in history, Jonah's head was spinning. He knew he should be paying attention and listening closely, because he had the feeling that J.B. had just said something pretty important, but he couldn't grasp what it meant. He couldn't quite understand it all. What? This was Catherine exploding. You want to send everyone back in time? Oh, that's what J.B. meant. That was important, all right. And suddenly the whole room was quiet. Everybody was stunned into silence at once. Catherine turned the elucidator away from the wall and aimed it at J.B. once more. You can't do that, she said. I won't let you. J.B. held out his hands apologetically, a particularly pitiful gesture with his wrists bound together. I'm sorry, he said. I wish there was some other way. I know this is not fair to all of you, but some of you are royalty or the children of explorers. You cannot understand the need to sacrifice your, for your country to take risks for humankind. This is even more important than that. Yes, returning you to history may be dangerous for many of you, even deadly for some of you. But think of it as your chance to save the world. Think of it as your chance to give your own life in order to help every other person on the planet for all time. Someone began clapping. It was Mr. Hodge. Oh, very noble, he said sarcastically, his clapping too slow and exaggerated to be sincere. What a pretty speech. But you forget, my friend, that these children have not been raised as royalty or as sacrificial lambs. They think of themselves as 21st century Americans. They're selfish. Spoiled, overprivileged, the richest society in history up to this point. They're not capable of sacrifice. Jonah waited for some kid to speak out and said, we're not selfish, but nobody could even say a word to that. They were all just watching Mr. Hodge. What I'm offering, Mr. Hodge continued, myself and Gary, that is, is the glorious future, he said. Even more privileged than you could imagine. Technology beyond your wildest dreams. I mean, we have time travel. You can't be sure that the video games well, you can be sure that the video games will all be truly awesome. His eyes seemed to twinkle hypnotically. I just want to complete my original mission. The ripple effect he's so worried about, and he pointed at JB. Ha, huh, you wouldn't even feel it. He took a hop step towards Catherine. He seemed barely constrained by the ropes around his ankle. We're working so hard. We worked so hard to get all of you back together in one place again, he said softly. The time crash put us 13 years off limits, but we came back it for you as soon as we could. Hand me that elucidator, sweetie, and we can all be on our way. Your new families are all waiting for you. Catherine jerked the elucidator back away from Mr. Hodge. All the kids here have families, she said coldly. She stared defiantly at Jonah as if she expected him to spring to her side, blink arms, and say, yeah, what she said. Jonah couldn't even move. And if we do what you want... We would all have to go back to being babies again, said a voice quietly in the crowd. Jonah looked back. It was Andrea Crowell, the girl with braids. We would have to forget everything, forget our entire lives, forget everyone we've ever known. Well, yes, Mr. Hodge said, but it's not like you would remember that you were forgetting, Mr. Hodge said, looking uncomfortable. You would be perfectly happy in the future, I promise you. Jonah looked from Mr. Hodge to J.B., both of them were staring back at him as if they expected him to make a decision. He glanced over his shoulder, and several of the other kids were anxiously looking towards him. Why? 
Oh yeah, Jonah thought I did kind of take charge before grabbing the elucidator, capturing Angela, opening the door, closing the door. He felt like climbing on top of the bench and calling out, hey, guess what? I'm good at quick things, snap decisions, rash actions, and that's all. This one, too big for me. Somebody will have to take this one and think about this for a long time because that's not my department. But no one else was talking, so Jonah sighed. What if we just want to stay where we are, stay in our own time? This is where we belong, the 21st century, I mean. But the future's better, Mr. Hodge said at the same time as J.B. said, no, you don't belong in the 21st century. Yes, we do, Jonah said stubbornly. J.B. shook his head. It was just a mistake. All of you ending up where you did, when you did. Hodge was carrying his load of stolen babies to the future, and we, those of us who enforce the laws of time travel, we knew we had to stop him as soon as we could. There's a protocol to stopping in the middle of the time stream, steps that everybody agrees to to avoid doing more damage, and Hodge broke every rule. Oh, come on, that's impossible, Hodge said mockingly. You time fanatics have so many rules, it would take an eternity to break them all. JB just glared at Hodge. Jonah could hear a few kids in the back of the room snickering. I'm not explaining this well enough, JB said, looking back at Jonah. It's really complicated, but I'll try to put this in terms that you can understand. It would be like a criminal kidnapping a bunch of babies in New York City and trying to fly them to Los Angeles. But when he's caught in the middle of the country, he refuses to give up. And instead, he crash lands in Kansas City and sets off a nuclear weapon that almost completely destroys the Midwest. He paused, looking down at the ropes, and then he peered up. I'm trying to undo the nuclear explosion. Everyone was silent for a long moment, and then Catherine said, that's a stupid comparison, because a nuclear explosion in Kansas City would kill the stolen babies. All the other kids began muttering as well. Jonah heard Alex say, but if the nuclear fallout blowing towards Los Angeles would be that kind of time ripple he was talking about. Jonah held up his hand, and to his amazement, everybody stopped talking, ready to listen to him. Okay, he said, I get it that nobody planned for us to end up here, he said, but that's what happened. And we've lived all of our lives in the 20th and 21st centuries. So this is where we belong right now. It's what we are. It's where we are. It's where our families are. His eyes skimmed over Catherine's face as he said that, and she smiled encouragingly. Look, Joan appeared at Mr. Hodge. You're just going to have to find some other babies for those families in the future. And you, he turned to J his attention to JB. You're going to have to figure out some other way to fix the ripple and save time. I'm sure you'll think of something. I don't know about the other kids, but I'm staying here. This would have come off very well, very dramatically, except he realized he wasn't exactly saying the right thing, and he was forced to add, I mean, I'm staying in the now. Whatever. You know what I mean. Mr. Hodge smiled slyly. That's what I've always loved about you 21st century Americans, he said. They're always so convinced that they can control their own destinies. Go on, then feel free. Walk right out the door and have a nice life. That's when Jonah remembered the nothingness on the other side of the door. The fact that the 21st century and everything outside the cave had disappeared. Tell me the code to go home, he said. Please. Mr. Hodge shook his head. No. Jonah to look, turned to J.B. and after a second's hesitation, J.B. shook his head. No. You're going to have to choose, he said. Your now is off limits. Where do you want to go? The future or the past? And that's where we stop. Until next time.